Okay, this is Matt. One more time, we're going to go over how a furnace works. We're going to talk a little last. Our last one, we talked about the three different parts of a furnace. We talked about the gas train a little bit. We talked about the heat exchanger, and we talked a little bit about the blower section. This time, let's talk just a little bit more about those same components, but how they interact. Okay, now my son's in the background. He's making a little bit of noise because he's coloring too, but he doesn't quite have the same masterful skills that I do. Okay, in the old style furnaces, let's just do a cross section again. Pretty good at those. We'll show you the blower section. Now, kind of remember that one of these things, these are all, the, all these components are connected kind of electronically or electrically in these old furnaces. All right, there's our ribbon burner here. Heat exchanger, ribbon burner, blower. Okay, or let's just refer to it as the gas train. Okay, what happens? How does this work? How do things happen? How does the blower start? How does the gas train start? Well, our, we have 120 volt power coming in to our furnace. All right, there's a transformer in there that reduces that power to 24 volts or gives us a control voltage. All right, and that control voltage goes through a series of safeties and a uh, actually probably in this older type furnace with a pilot probably has one safety in it, which is an overheat control. And this thermostat sends power to here or allows power to flow from our transformer somewhere here. Let's just put that here. All right, it allows power to flow through and allows our gas valve to open up. Okay, so here's here's our basic. I'll show you what that is in just a second. Here's our basic uh, function. Our thermostat calls for heat. In, in other words, it moves to a point that says, hey, I need to heat up, I'm cold. So it gets to 68, 72, whatever you've got it set on. It allows that to go through. It allows the gas valve to open up. The pilot light lights the ribbon burner and it heats up this heat exchanger to a certain temperature. That's what this probe is right here. We're looking at a combination high limit and fan control what it would do is get to a certain temperature and then it would allow 120 volt power to go down and start our fan and our fan again would do the same thing it would start to blow and then once the thermostat is satisfied once it gets to that 72 degrees or whatever we have it set at might be just a little bit more it would shut off the gas valve but our furnace would continue to blow warm air because this combination high limit and fan control was still controlling it so that's how you know after a short period of time if your fan shuts off before and it's still blowing warm air that's what it's doing it comes on allows the fan to blow allows it to shut off now for some reason that the fan didn't come on the furnace would come on a burner start blowing or start start glow, sending heat up through the heat exchanger but the blower never came on this dial inside here would turn to a certain temperature and then would shut the entire gas train off which is what we want to happen so does everybody understand that so what happens is the thermostat calls for heat the pilot light is in place and it lights the uh, the burner once the gas valve opens up and once it gets to a certain temperature on the inside of the heat exchanger, the fan comes on. Once the thermostat is satisfied, the burner shuts down or the gas train shuts down and the blower continues to blow until the, all the heat is out of the heat exchanger. So, all right, are there any questions on that? You can't really ask them, can you? But you can send them to me. I think my email is on that. So let's take a look at how a newer furnace works. Let me get rid of this. Now, in our last series, we went over the different type of heat exchanger. So let's draw a side view of our heat exchanger again. Okay, we got our bent pipe heat exchanger. We have our blower section. Again, oh man, let me put it in a circle. Let me make it look kind of like it does. There we go. All right. And we got our in-shot burner here with our gas train. Uh, uh, but if you remember, we also have an induced draft blower up at the top. And what it does, or a draft inducer up at the top, and what it does is it starts to pull a draft through, through our bent pipe heat exchanger. Okay, so here's our thermostat. 
Now this is probably all an electronic control board on the inside of your furnace. So you won't have the same components. What you will have is you'll have a 20, you'll have 120 volts that's being converted to 24 volts for a control voltage again, but this is what happens. Your thermostat calls for heat. It allows that circuit to be made again, but then it tells this induced draft fan through the control board in the furnace, it tells the induced draft fan to turn on. Oops, sorry, I just knocked something. Okay, there we go, a little bit better. View. The induced draft fan comes on, and once it makes its safety, it pulls in a couple pressure switches to make sure every, the flue isn't blocked and everything is working properly. It pulls that through, and it starts a glow plug up. Remember, we talked about that before. It starts the glow plug up. And once that glow plug gets to, is on for 35 to 45 seconds, it allows the gas valve to open up. It sends a signal to the control board. says, hey, I've been on long enough, and I'm working properly. And the gas valve comes on. So the gas valve comes on. It, the gas comes across that. Um, the gas, excuse me, I got lost there for a second. The gas comes across that uh, hot surface igniter and ignites and goes through. Now, in that control board is also a fan control that tells that fan to come on between 35 and 180 seconds. Inside there it could be 35, but it could be 45. So somewhere in that time frame between 45 and 180 seconds, that fan is going to come on. So you don't want it to blow cold air. I think they probably come. They probably come on at a certain amount, you know, certain time from the factory, probably around 90 seconds. So they come on, and once your thermostat is satisfied, then all this shuts down. The induced draft blower will be the last thing to go off, and then your fan will stay on between 90 and 180 seconds to get rid of all that gas that, or all that heat that's left in your heat exchanger. So that's pretty simple. That's your sequence of events. That's what I call it. So in an older style furnace, your pilot light has to be lit. That's your sa one of your safeties. The thermostat calls for heat. It allows gas the gas valve to come on. Once that heat exchanger is heated up to a certain temperature, then the fan comes on via the combination uh, high limit and get fan control. And then once your thermostat is satisfied, it shuts down and the fan continues to blow until all the heat is blown out of the heat exchanger. In a newer style furnace, your thermostat calls for heat. Your draft inducer comes on here. It once it makes its safeties, it turns. It allows or sends a signal. I say I like to say allows, but it, it sends a signal to the control panel that says for that um, hot surface igniter to come on. Once it's been on for a short period of time, it sends a signal back down there and says, "Hey, I'm on. I'm ready to go." The gas valve opens up. When the gas valve opens up, it allows that gas to go across the hot surface igniter and burn off. And once your thermostat's satisfied, it kind of just does the opposite. It shuts down the gas valve and shuts down the uh, draft inducer. And then a few, about a minute and a half later, it'll shut down your fan. Any questions, just send me an email. We'll cover a little bit more in our next one about condensing furnaces. Thanks a lot.